First, I want to say thank you so much to Justin Tranter for inviting me to be here. I mean, I, I would do anything for him, but he has always continued to teach me and to show me things beyond creativity, um, things that are important, that matter to him, and has opened my eyes up immensely. Um, that wasn't part of my speech, but if, um, if you've ever written a song before, I can tell you that it's a very vulnerable and intimate experience. That can be quite intimidating. You know, you're not quite sure if you have chemistry with other people that you're writing with or even trusting someone with your story, which can be very personal. I feel so fortunate to know and work with the lovely, amazing, strong, compassionate Justin Tranter. From the moment you met Justin, you feel welcomed, you feel special, you feel seen, and you feel heard. Having worked with Justin for so many years, I'm lucky to have experienced this firsthand. Justin has pushed me not only as an artist and a songwriter, but also as a human being. And for that, I will be extremely grateful for for the rest of my life. There is so much to love about Justin, but what I truly love the most is their conviction and passion to be a voice for the communities that need it. Whether it's uh, demanding action on common sense gun control or fighting against discrimination of queer people, Justin never gives up. And he will never, ever take no as an answer. I know that. Um, these are the qualities of change makers throughout history and he's contributing to changing the world, not just his success with music and, and what he's done, but for his community and he's inspired me so much. This includes, by the way, all the most amazing people in this room tonight. With all the darkness in the world, Justin is an undeniable light that has brought me and a lot of other people hope. I am inspired by their unapologetic approach to life. Justin does as they damn well please, and that I respect. It is, it is truly my honor to present the 2019 Bill of Rights Award of the ACLU of Southern California to my dear, dear friend and soulmate, Justin Tranter. How the fuck are you? Uh, this is an honor like none other. Edie, that performance was unfucking believable. <laughs> to hear all those songs in one moment is just life changing. Selena, I love being your friend. I love making music with you. Uh, and I really love cheering you on as you have stepped into your activism this year. It is unbelievable. If you haven't watched the series Undocumented on, on Netflix, please do. It's, it's shocking. Um, the ACLU. <laughs> the ACLU Bill of Rights Award. This is, uh, this is fucking nuts. This is way... <laughs> I am not worthy at all. Um, the, the lifelong activists that were on the stage before me make me feel uh, very uh, small in a good way because I feel very inspired to continue this for another however fucking long I live. Um, but no, this, this award, coming from the family that I come from, uh, a bunch of advocates and loud mouths, um, uh, this award means way more to me than um, the Grammy and Golden Globe that I lost. <laughs> but truly, ever since I was a teenager, combining art and activism is what has brought me the most joy. 
Fundraising brings me joy. Opening doors for marginalized people brings me joy. And speaking out, even when it's scary as hell, it still brings me joy. So to get this award and be recognized for what makes me fucking joyful <laughs> makes me very, very, very grateful. Because I believe, I believe that in these very dark times, in these divisive times, that simply being joyful is an act of resistance. As a queer, gender non-conforming person, that's right, bitches, get used to, huh? As a, <laughs> do you like my outfit, by the way? Okay. Uh, as a queer, <laughs> Jesus Christ, as a queer gender nonconforming person, waking up to this administration attacking my community and many other marginalized communities at every turn has not made the last few years easy. They can try and take my rights, but they can't take my fucking joy. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop fighting. That just means I'm gonna do it with a big gay smile on my face. <laughs> so with that said, um, instead of spending the rest of this time thanking all of the unbelievable people in my life who make not only my, my creative work, but also my activist work possible, Katie Vinton, main shout out for this bitch right here, making everyone in our lives donate money like every other week. We're like, this email isn't a donation, but it actually is. Um, no, no, but so instead of going through all that, I would like to, to, to focus on some more joy. I would like to um, celebrate some unsung folks who demonstrated powerful, joy-inducing acts of resistance this year. Are you okay with that? I'd like to also focus on local activists and local work. So to start with that, and again, if I fuck up these names or anything, please forgive me. I'll apologize to you personally afterwards. Corey Jackson. Corey runs Sigma Beta Psi, which mentors over 200 boys of color, and he was a critical partner in the ACLU's lawsuit against Riverside to end a program that was criminalizing 11 to 17-year-olds for adolescent, adolescent misbehavior or for simply needing emotional or educational support. So on the count of three, let's get joyful and say thank you, Corey. One, two, three. Thank you, Corey! Marsha Doss and Amy Monroe, powerful student leaders who spoke truth to power in the Students Not Suspects campaign to hold LAUSD officials accountable to students by ending discriminatory student searches. On the count of three, let's say thank you, Marsha and Amy. One, two, three. Thank you, Marsha and Amy. This is fabulous. I just almost tripped on my skirt. That would have been really chic. Um, LAUSD board member Monica Garcia, the LA school board leader who responded to community demands and championed the end of random searches of students in LAUSD. On the count of three, let's say thank you, Monica. One, two, three. Loretta Whitson from California Association of School Counselors. Loretta is helping to lead the ACLU's advocacy to increase mental health support in schools. On the count of three, let's say thank you, Loretta. One, two, three. Thank you, Loretta. Pastor Eddie Anderson, the pastor from McCarty Memorial Church who works at LA Voice has been leading outreach for the ACLU's LA Coalition for DA Justice and Accountability, which works to ed educate people about the powers of a DA and the importance of voting for a DA that reflects their values. On the count of three, let's say thank you, Pastor Eddie. One, two, three. The families affected by police violence who bravely led the work to pass the police use of force bill. 
In the face of injustice, they turned their tragedy into power to effect change, honor their loved ones, and protect our communities. Allies worked in solidarity with these families as they raised awareness about the issue, built networks, made phone calls, collected letters of support, held vigils, met with elected representatives, and made multiple trips to our state's capital to testify before the legislature. And then there were many, many volunteers who worked to get the message out, made phone calls, helped with petitions, and some of them are here tonight. So on the count of three, let's say thank you. One, two, three. Thank you. During these trying times, I urge you all to celebrate the victories that we are having. Because of, yes, yes. Because of the ACLU, we have the right to fight back. Because of the ACLU, we have the right to speak up. And because of the ACLU, we have the right to be fucking joyful. Thank you. Yeah.